How would you describe GBL? Go watch the movie Dazed and Confused. It's a cult classic, and there's a character played by Ben Affleck named O'Banion, I believe. O'Banion. Basically, he's a guy who literally flunked himself out of high school for the sole purpose that he could come back and haze the young kids coming from junior high, beat them with a stick. That's the best description I can give of the video. Um, if I were to describe WWE, it's like a well-oiled machine. A uh, billion dollar company, very successful, but it's almost like the military. You got your head captain, who we always know who it is, and then you got like little sergeants that are put in place to align the troops and soldiers. And the longer you're there, the higher you get ranked. That's the best way I can describe WWE. And um, if you don't fit their mold or you're not part of their you know, game plan or don't um, react to their tests the right way, um, you're booted out. John in the dress room is a little abrasive. And to young guys and, and, and guys that are new to the business and haven't been around, I can see how he would intimidate them. But you know, I know him differently, I, and I know I, you know he wouldn't hurt if hurt a fly. But he's he just has those ways about him. You know, he he can come off as a bully, but you just gotta know him. And I heard you say that Jacques didn't like Bradshaw very much. No, because one time uh, we were in Winnipeg, I think, uh, we, we had a analyzed uh, flight, you know, a private flight for uh, just the wrestlers. And there's uh, a van from, let's say, a Holiday Inn van, you know, who comes to pick us up. And Bradshaw just tosses the driver out of the seat and he grabs the wheel. And he does like crazy things in the snow and the guy's from Texas, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, so Jacques got, he, he gets nervous because he says, man, I got kids at home, you know, you're from fucking Texas, you're driving in the fucking snow, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And Brad's just having fun and ha, 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 ha. And uh, he told him, you know, when we get there, if we're in life, man, you, you're not going to believe it. And then uh, we had a big argument and they almost fought, you know, and uh, fucking... Bradshaw just shut up. I, I liked uh, I liked Bradshaw. Uh, he he was a bit of a bully to, oh. to some he didn't like. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but uh, I was around. Uh, I was actually there before he was there, so I got to work with him his first matches in the WWF. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we became friends. So um, I worked with him. Gee, I, I would honestly say a hundred times. Mm -hmm. No exaggeration. Uh, up and down the road throughout the years, and uh, it was always good to me, you know. Always, never had a problem, you, you know. Have a story about bullying that he might have done someone that could be a. Yeah, the other guys, he was just always the tough guy, you know. Always uh, trying to prove something. I, nothing that comes to mind, uh, nothing juicy that's, uh, you know, worth wasting my time, but, uh, you know, he always made sure he. Uh, you know, he was uh, the tough guy on the block. You know what I mean? I remember, what about the blue meanie? <laughs> I remember the blue meanie that he uh, that he split him open. Oh. Uh, that I I thought was really not not professional and uh, not good because uh, the blue meanie uh, his real name is Brian, who I love deeply. He's a wonderful wonderful guy. Um, you know, he, he didn't deserve that. Uh, from what I understand. I think he hit him with a chair or uh, something or punched him, something where he split him open very badly. Uh, and I think it was at the uh, either the first or the second ECW one night stand, um, which was uncalled for, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it was very deplorable. But uh, anything with Joey Styles, I, I don't recall. But uh, the, the stuff he did with Blue Meanie, I, I don't know where it came from. Do you think it was intentional? He was oh, I, I, I think I, I think it was definitely intentional. Uh, definitely intentional. In 2006, when he was doing the billionaire thing with the car and the, the Longhorns and the limousines and the hats, I, I thought that was the real JBL. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was entertaining. Um, I, I thought he had a great run, but uh, you know. Uh, at that point, I think what you see is what you get, you know. Um, in, in sometimes you, you hear, you know, life imitates art and art imitates life. And I think uh, a little bit of both happened to JBL. Because uh, the same guy that I met in 1996, 
uh, wasn't necessarily the same guy I met uh, in uh, 2007, 2008 when I was there. And I remember JBL kind of took some cheap shots at Harry in a match one time and I'm pretty sure Harry uh, in a ring with no rules or in a street fight would fucking rape Justin Bradshaw pretty badly even though he was supposed to be so tough. I saw him in the brawl for all and he didn't look like he was that badass at all and that's just that's the same thing coming from a 195 pound guy it's like maybe he's maybe he was a tough guy and if he got a hold of you good but I mean if you get punched in the face a couple times by a guy that's even 190 195 and your teeth are getting fucking knocked out of your mouth or you're getting eye gouged or something because it's not some wrestling match where you got a referee and uh, or MMA with gloves on and a breaks and the mouth guard and shit. I'm not bite you. It just says you can bite me or I'll fucking poke you in the eyes. You can poke me in the eyes, but it's a different type of fight. And uh, I think sometimes guys take liberties in wrestling and act like they're tough when uh, some of the toughest guys in the world in wrestling supposedly the brawl for all exposed how tough they really were. And most of those guys got fucked up. Doctor Destiny Williams was fucked up. Uh, Bradshaw got fucked up. Yeah. Uh, what were, was that just the internet making more of something that wasn't really there? Or? No, you know what? They just, I think it was WWE's way of just kind of killing me off TV, but it was just kind of like, why did, the, why did you even have me debut on TV anyway, like with that, you know? And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a shitty thing and it wasn't really John's fault, but uh, had it been... Had it been me now, and we had done that match, it would have been a shoot, and he would have lost that one. So. I know your buddies with Moro. What do you think of all that? Uh, everything that's been talked about. Supposedly? Well, you know, it's tough to say because Moro. You know, he. I know Moro pretty well, and he he does take things really personally. So, and I know that JBL has his reputation of being a bully and stuff like that. So I think it could be a combination of a couple things. And really bottom line is Moro's got a lot of like mental health issues and he's been pretty open about that on Twitter and everything. So anybody with mental health issues pretty much shouldn't work in WWE. I mean, it's, a, it's not really the best work environment just because of the stress and, and everything. And I think that he probably, you know, he takes things personally. Probably J JBL was hazing him a bit and he probably just said screw this and snapped and said I'm having enough of this and I'm leaving. I mean I have different, I don't want to get into it why I think they brought the BWO back. There's been different speculations on why they did. I mean I have my own reasons but I'll probably A lot of people suspect <laughs> obviously it was a favor because of the Bradshaw and we're, that could be. Which, what was your reaction to that? Speaking of the one night stand, I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't believe it happened. I think J J John was drinking. There had been some issues with him and Meanie in the past, and they're standing in the ring. Why were they allowing the talent to drink? Uh, because it was Wild West, man. It was the I don't know. They were all up on the balcony <laughs> drinking all night long. It was an absolute recipe for disaster. And I just I mean, Meanie's the most harmless guy in the world. I don't know what the backstory fully was, but he was attacked on pay-per-view and just bludgeoned. You watch as soon as that begins, you just watch. Go watch the pay-per-view. Go watch it again. I grab Ray Mysterio by the throat and pull Ray into the corner with me, and I looked right at him and said, "Don't move. Just stay, let's just stay right here." And uh, it was just a bad sight. I mean, Meanie got busted open, and bludgeoned, and it sucked. John did a lot of shit that was messed up, I and mean, more of it was just to entertain himself or to keep the sanctity of the business because he broke in totally different. A lot of the guys he broke in. With Bobby Duncombe and, and around Stan and all the other guys. He was an old school, hard nosed guy. I just felt bad all around for that. I just marred. It, put, it ended the evening on, for me, it ended on a low note. An evening that was supposed to be really cool. Just also on JBL, like, it's known that him and both him and Bob Holly were a little bit bullies, but was it ever told to them by the office do you think if someone was kind of out of line that they had to actually probably you know. to a degree and you have to, you, you used to have to have locker room policemen like that yeah, we, you to, when you're in the WWE world in that bubble and you're just mind controlled there you're more of a dark depressed soul <laughs> you just are that's how it was you're always on edge and I actually think the office liked that a little bit yeah. keep the guys on edge keep making each other's throat keep that competitive advantage I truly do think that and uh you know, John and, 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 and Bob, I think maybe just to rile themselves up. I don't know what the deal was. Maybe it was so they could entertain Taker. I have no clue. But a lot of it happened. Uh, 
nobody got killed. It sucked. When you're in it, it was awful. I mean, luckily for the guys today, they're never going to have to experience any of that. Yeah. I still talk to a lot of people up there. When I hear the stories of what it's like now, I'm like, <laughs> you have no clue. But uh, Didn't one guy actually quit the company? Palmer over Cannon. Yeah. yeah. He actually, I remember giving him some heads up before the tour, and we, I'll never forget, I woke up in the middle of the night to a text message. He said, hey, Nova, it's Palmer. I'm on my way back. They got me. And I was like, what? I don't know all the particulars of the story, but I got really hot and heavy. This is after he had, I mean, that kid did, gave up a lot. He, he moved down from Georgia. He was in the developmental system. During his time there, <laughs> right before his full-time tenure on the road, his brother had passed away in a really bad motorcycle wreck. Uh, he had a lot of ups and downs, Palmer, mentally, behind the scenes, like cracking him. And then he was up there and they just pushed him to the edge. I know some of what was said and I won't repeat it. It was it was too horrendous for words. And I just, what I do remember is the stories of Ray Mysterio running out to stop him from leaving. Cause Ray was like, please don't leave, man. You're one of us. Ray did the right thing. Ray ran out there. And Ray is just, if this is the list of the best guys ever, Ray's up here, in and out of the ring. But uh, Oscar, he ran out there to try to stop him from leaving. He was so like heartbroken about it. Ray was so upset, like he didn't want to see it. But at that point, it was, I never. I don't think I've ever spoke to Palmer again after that. I just I don't even know what he does today. Did you ever have any issues with uh, Bradshaw? You don't seem like a guy that no. you would have picked on, but he was no, he didn't pick on me. Did no, you? we actually got along really well because he's a former football player too. So we'd always talk football and sports and stuff. And man, I never had any problems with him. Did you notice any of some of the other stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they, you know, he tortured Miz like you would never believe. Threw him out of the locker room, made him dress in the hallway, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he had his moments. <laughs> John was an overbearing son of Edge. He could be. But it was, it was good natured, but it was stiff. Okay. It was a joke, but it, might have not have been a joke to the people that he was getting on a little bit. JBL, that whole set, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, first of all, you worked with JBL initially. 96. Uh, in 96. Yeah. Any issues with him at that time? No, no. Well, he, 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 uh, um, he didn't want to put me over. And I got nothing to do with that, you know, and, and went over and then did. And he told me, he said, I'm going to kick out. If you don't pin me, I'm going to kick out. He told me he was going to kick strong, you know, and he's a big, strong boy then. And, well, and he kicked out. If you go back and watch it, he kicked out and, and you wrestled. And I did the meat hook, remember the yeah. chin in the, in the chest, <laughs> yeah. and then hook and to, to get it to, to pin him. He kicked out of the first thing, his roll through slam. Yeah. And he, he kicked out. And then I just best I could, and and because he he was kicking, and, but he told me he was going to, you know. And you know. pretty sure you could out wrestle him in a shoot in those days, anyway. Yeah, but uh, you know, but but uh, guys were getting in his ear too. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean, right? You because know. you had heat against you, as you said, right? Yeah. And he was yeah working his way up in the pool. Yes, 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 yes. He hadn't. He'd been there longer, of course, than me. He'd been there maybe a year. Right. Already. Yeah. Yeah. You're but after that, I've never had any problem, you know, and we, 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 a few times after that and work, never did, and we're, we're, we're all right, we're cool. So back to that uh, one night stand, could you give us the long version of that night? Um, that with Bradshaw in that, um, there was heat there. We had the uh, hardcore homecoming thing that Shane, uh, uh, Jeremy Borash, Bob Ryder and those guys all put together, a lot of the ECW guys in the arena, Raven and all them, you know, and, and that, and, and uh, Shane booked me on that, and then Dreamer called me a few days later and booked me on the WWF one and said we could do it, yeah, yeah okay, and everything. And the WWF guys didn't want us there. Uh, the WWF, you know, the brass kind of, you know, all the, you know, uh, just didn't, and they, they it was friction kind of and you could feel it and i thought i was cool with john and uh i heard his radio show a few days forward and i put him over i said good I good stuff that he's talking about you know and uh he was real up on everything and uh he was, he was he'd been drinking and we were out by the ring and you know we were going to do that battle roll thing and 
we were getting bad vibes and like they were going to shoot on us and we didn't really know and uh, Vincent talked to us and talked like uh, they were going to uh, go with the brand and we were going to have jobs you know and I, I just got back working full time yeah and had not been working full time since about oh two you know and uh been just doing other things around it you know i'd bounty hunt repo cars actually you know and i'm doing some shows you know but and i was just glad to be there and have a job you know and i was like all right you know and i could tell they didn't want you know and they didn't like it because the hardcore thing they thought it was going you know and of course the spot you know and but but uh he was going to open ecw back up he didn't do it to a year later but but uh 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 we're out by the ring and they have to do the thing where uh, the rehearsal thing, and they come and do. And that big, remember Matt Morgan, the yeah. great big guy. They have him. He just they all come up on us, trying to kind of almost punk us, you know, yeah. not really, you know. But and and, and somebody goes, is "This gonna be a shoot on?" I was like, "I don't know, man. I said, be ready for anything, right?" And uh, big Matt, you know, I'm like looking at his chest, and dude, and I like went. I said, well, I said, you'll be a lot of help to your mom when you're full grown <laughs> like that. And I said, you know, I said, I said, he played football, basketball, I knew Jimmy liked him. And he goes, he looks at me and he says, he goes, hey, he goes, um, he goes, do something that I do. And I tell you, nut shot me and that way my way might get out of there. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't have no problem with us. And a lot of them didn't, you know, it kind of stirred up. Well, John, we're outside of the ring. Chris Chetty's standing beside me. John's talking to some of the agents are over there and some of them big boys, you know, Tonko and, and Matt and some of them other boys, you know. A lot of, you know, they had a lot of big guys in. And John said, he was kind of drunk, he said something, this, this, other, that, and do. They get cute, don't hesitate one to, to knock them the fuck out. Yeah. And then, and, and, uh, and uh, like that, and I went, okay, that's cool. I said, there's two way street to that, man. I said, you know, one, you know, I was kind of joking. They weren't joking. Yeah. And uh, so we got out there, and some heat, I guess something happened. Meany, uh, Meany uh, had said some stuff about John being a bully or something like that, you know. And uh, I don't know, I didn't know all this, but all I saw was was in the ring, and you, you, it was it, it was intense during the night. You didn't really know what was going to happen, and the crowd was alive. And Brad John was a champion, I guess then, and, uh, and had a ton of heat, and he ragging on the ECW thing and all that, and and uh, you know you didn't really know what was going to go down, and and uh, you, you really didn't. And it was intense when we all went and did, but I just saw him waffle meanie out of the corner. Of my eye. I thought, what the fuck is going on? You know, he just what. Like, Plowed him. I mean, from behind, man. Hit him in the back. And Meany had had staples in his head from the, from like a night or two before that uh, at the hardcore homecoming, off a chair shot accident. And Meany blood just went everywhere. So I just go up to him. What the fuck, John? What's going on? You know, like I, I, he goes, "Fuck you, man!" Bam, kind of rabbit punched me right. And and I, and when he get him, like, ah, God, I'm like, bam, I come up, not not like. A, regular like like you know what I mean he, I was under him and, and caught him in the eye and got his eye a little you know a little bit and then that and he goes oh fuck Floyd like that you know he always called me Floyd and, and I, so I like went on from him and you know after that it when I broke off from him he goes come back I said I'll be back fuck you man you know I can't you know kind of you know you know how it is you know yeah. and that and, and and I look over and, and Regal Steve was I had, I had was doing something I go it was balls an axle and, and I go up and I go, hey Steve come with me we're safe he goes oh hold on mate they got a spot and he turns around takes his cane goes out of the top with uh, that's his spot so I go back and I see balls and axle wailing with John and Sandman come up behind like looked and, and come up behind him and got him from behind and when he did I got shots on him right, body shots right there right pretty you know put him in there it's pretty good you know and it was everybody was kind of you know and and then uh Happened in the ring, left in the ring, all that did. He popped me back, you know, and everything. And they got him out of the ring, whatever happened. Go backstage, and uh, John was legit pissed off. But me, I remember going, he shot on me, man. You see that? What the fuck? He goes, thanks for helping me. You know, he goes, God. I said, yeah, you know, you know what's going on. I go, what the fuck's going on, man? You know, I can't. He goes, I don't know. I don't know. He goes, hey, I think he's mad at something I said about him on a shoot interview or something. Something like that. So we come back, 
and uh, uh, John was pissed off. The agents were talking. Uh, Johnny Ace was screaming, "We don't do that here. We don't do that here." So we got in the dressing, and Johnny come back up and go, "Meanie, what the fuck's going on? What brought all that on?" And all that. I kept my mouth shut because they'd said we were gonna, you know, he was gonna open up ECW, and we were gonna have full-time jobs. I was like, "Great, you know, heck yeah, man, I'm down." And um, I didn't say nothing about it because, uh, um, you know, you didn't want to get hit with the office. And, you know, this, I didn't want to be unprofessional. You don't want nothing. You said the harassment kind of began when you were a single star. Uh, would that have been Bradshaw being the main uh, perpetrator? Uh, that's just the way the guy is. He's obviously still there. They obviously like him. You know, everybody has a unique way, a unique personality. And maybe that was just his way of breaking in and testing you. You know what I mean? Um, what I, type of stuff was he doing that was getting under your uh, skin? Just name calling. and they, At first it was like, okay, it blew it off, but then it just became more and more and more to the point where it was, it was very hurtful after a while, you know, but you never try to show it. You know? But uh, like I said, that was the past. And Were you around when uh, Joey Styles knocked Bratch out? No, but I heard about it. And I guess you probably weren't feeling too uh, sorry for him. Well, pushed the butt. Where's Joey now and where's Bradshaw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bradshaw still got the position. Yeah. What was the reason um, why JBL kind of attacked you in that Raw Battle Royal for the one night only? Oh, the uh, ECW one night stand? Did, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, ta I've talked about how certain things were a fortunate situation. It sucks for everybody involved, but, you know, uh, my first go around in WWE from 98 to 2000, you know, uh, for whatever reason, just JBL didn't like me, you know, when he was, when he was Bradshaw with the accolades. And I, I have all these theories in the world of why maybe he didn't like me or whatever, you know, there's... There was an incident where my first weekend in, into WWE, uh, I debuted in, in uh, Philly, and then we were going to do a shot in Baltimore. And then back when they did one live Raw and taped another Raw, so I did Sunday Night Heat, and then I did the live Raw, and then we were going to go up to, I believe, either New Haven or Hartford, Connecticut for the taped Raw that would air the next week. So I was, you know, being an indie wrestler and this travel for ECW, I was just going to wrestle Philly, wrestle Baltimore, and then just drive straight up Connecticut from Baltimore. It's a couple of hours, right? You know, Earl Hubner goes, no stupid, we fly you now. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. I turned in my rental car and uh, he gave me my flight information. I go to the airport, I check in. I look at my ticket. Huh. Seat 1A. It's, it's up front, right? That's close to the front of the plane, right? Huh? And I get to the airplane. I get on the airplane. I realize, holy shit, they gave me a first class seat, which I wasn't expecting. But the booking had been so last second. I mean, they booked my ticket either the day before or day of to fly from Baltimore to the, the Connecticut. I didn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> and the moment I knew I was in trouble, I sit my, I <laughs> picture this, first class, first row of seating, uh, Blue Meanie, Big Boss Man, across the aisle, Shawn Michaels, all right? One of these things is not like the other, <laughs> you know? So I'm sitting there and guys are coming on the plane and they're like looking at me. I'm like, oh. You know, they're like, you know, looking at me like sh shocked that I'm sitting in, in first class. But I, the moment I knew I was in trouble, McFoley goes, oh, meanie, no. <laughs> what, Mick, what? Oh, no, meanie, oh. And I was like, he's like, you know, this look of concern. I was like, take me with you, Mick. Take me with you. Put me in your bag. Let me hide, you know. So the flight's going on and, you know, I'm just feeling it. You know, he, my face is red. My tongue is getting fat like my yeah I'm just like oh no I just want if like if there was a window next to me I would just want to open it and done the nasty plunge out like ah see you later and from the back you hear you hear a voice boom out why the fuck is the blue mini in first class and 
<laughs> I just wanted to shrink and die. I was like, oh my god. So I get off the plane, go to the baggage claim. Everybody's giving me the eye. Everybody's like, Mark Henry, Mark Henry goes, you fucked up, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. And then somebody you know, finally went, hey, man, if that happens again, next time get up and offer your seat to a vet. Shit, why, why couldn't somebody tell me that before I went and sat in first class? Because uh, I had never really flown ECW. I'm driving everywhere, you know. You would drive from New Jersey. You would drive from New Jersey to New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm not used to flying, so I get on my first booked wrestling flight, and it happens to be in first class. So I don't know if that rubs a few people the wrong way, because when we got to the TV, uh, we got to TV, and uh, I, 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 I'm pleading my case in the car. It's me, Al Snow, Mick Foley, and Bob Polly. I was like. Dude, I, how bad is it? Did I really fuck up? Is somebody gonna shit my bag? Please don't let anybody shit my bag. And Pop Holly's like, I don't think people shit in bags anymore. I was like, oh, thank you. Well, thank God for that. I was like, I, I truly didn't know, you know, I pleaded my case, you know. And then we get the TV, and then uh, I get summoned to a room, and it's uh, Jerry Briscoe and Jack Lanza. They go, look, we we'll understand you're new. This was a mistake. It won't happen again. I was like, absolutely. And Bob Holly was with me. And Bob Holly is awesome. He stood up. He said, you know what? He didn't know there was a mistake. And he, he was just saying to the car how sorry he was and stuff like that. And uh, But I don't know if that lingered on into the reason why maybe me John didn't like me or John had beef with me or whatever yeah that's why I, I kind of hate talking about the story again because I don't want to bring up old open up old wounds because eventually when he, the, the one night stand thing happened unfortunately uh, it's just what you remembered for best yeah I think it's just because it's a rare thing in that time frame for that to happen yeah. on such a, an event with the, a lot of viewers so you, 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 that hasn't happened since to my knowledge in the WWE right and, and the, the weird thing is it, it happened right and uh, uh, the, the, the like the is, your guard was down right you yeah. didn't have any I had no idea it was coming uh, except for the fact that I saw him staring at like uh, we're doing a stare off and uh, we had practiced this too WWE guys, ECW guys here. Hey, you! I'll kick your butt. All this stuff, and uh, I think I yelled at JBL. Ah, I'll knock that cowboy hat off or whatever. Something, uh, something goofy. You know, we had something we had practiced, and uh, I look over and he's kind of like looking at me. I'm like, oh, oh, oh sure. But before the whole fracas broke out, like the bad, you know, these W guys, there was a guy, uh, one of the Basham brothers bald head kid I was like hey man we're never gonna probably have this chance again let's get pair off you know go back and forth you know punch 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 so I, I I'm you know the fracas breaks out I'm looking for uh, one of the Basham brothers and two nights early before Jeremy Borash had had his version of an ECW reunion with uh, the hardcore homecoming at the ECW arena and I got split open that night hard way back in my head by Sandman, I, it was either a ladder or a chair. So, so much time has gone by, I, I forget which, I'd have to watch it. So I go to the hospital, I get like eight staples right there. One night stand, the fracas breaks out, and John finds me, and I, while I'm paired off with somebody else, he punches me right where I got my staples two nights before. I don't know if he knew or whatever, but just by having there, by shit luck, hit me around there and you watch me go holy shit turn around and uh sure you put my shirt over my face and start throwing live rounds so i was like fuck you know, like a hockey fight well i ain't gonna take that so i try to snatch a headlock and you know if you're gonna fight somebody try to bring them as close so their punches don't have as much range so i bring them in and i'm trying to throw live rounds so somehow we got separated and um I get so much blood in my eyes. People don't realize when you get blood in your eyes, everything starts looking like a kaleidoscope. Like a, like it's like a weird kaleidoscope effect. I'm trying to clear my eyes out and you know, guys are coming up to me like fucking Ben Wog walks up and goes, 
some people thought I bleed. <laughs> I was like, I know. No, him. And he went off with somebody. Trace Smothers good. Trace Smothers came up and I was like, fucking JBL. I'm telling you, everybody's coming up to him. I'm like, hey, he just shot on me. And if you watch the tape, Sandman goes over with the Singapore cane, grabs him, and Tracy Smothers went, you know, goes up to him and you know gives him a couple live rounds and Bubba pulls him out. So we get back to the the gorilla position, which is right behind the curtain. Vince is there and a bunch of people. Johnny Ace comes up to me, and goes, "Who said you could bleed?" I went. I was like, I, I was like, he shot on me. And I get right there. I gave him the uh, the cliff notes of. He's never liked me, blah, blah, blah. Since my first time, blah, blah, blah. He never liked me. And, uh, you know, uh, he's like, well, he apologized. Sorry, this unacceptable stuff like that. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.